at some point it might occur to you, at some point you may have this discovery, and this is what they call Kensho in Zen, or this is what they call enlightenment or awakening. You may have this discovery that there, there is an awareness that's never not here. There is an awareness that is always here, and it never changes. And uh, it is not what's happening, it's the awareness of what's happening. So when you're practicing uh, meditation and you're practicing moving your attention from the thinking activity to being aware of the body breathing, you're giving yourself the opportunity to discover your true nature. Because when your attention is away from thinking, the possibility of your recognizing that awareness is your nature starts to show up in those moments when there's no thought and there is awareness there. It becomes possible for you to discover yourself, to discover your true nature, to discover that this awareness that you thought was your awareness. See, there's, there's the mistake. This awareness that you thought was your awareness, who's this you that's, that's aware, right? The you that you thought was your awareness was a product of your thinking that. The you that you thought was your awareness was a product of you thinking that. And like I said before, you don't have to think it all the time. You know, when you were a little kid uh, and you uh, first got named, you know, you got your name, right? Uh, and you went to kindergarten, your mother or your father might have pinned your name to your shirt, right? Because you're, you're still new at having the name, right? You, might, you may not remember your own name until you practice for a while, right? Yeah, but once you practice for a while and you, people call your name and you answer and all the rest of it, right, then you don't have to remember that anymore. Now you know your name. Same thing with your house. When you were a little kid, I remember my stepson when we used to go, go, go in the car. He used to say, how are you going to remember how to get home? That was a realistic concern he had. How are you going to remember where the house is, you know? Because in his little brain, that's, he was afraid. He, he would not remember where the house is, right? So that's a concern, right? But we don't have that concern because we know you're sitting here right now, you're not worried about whether you're gonna be able to get home or not. You know what I mean? That becomes a supposition, that becomes an assumption. Oh, I know where my house is and I know who I am. And once you know who you are and the you that you know who you are is a thought you had, right? then you, don't, you no longer have to keep thinking that thought to know who you are. You don't have to keep thinking your name to know your name. You don't have to keep thinking where you live to know where your home is. So that becomes an accepted, understood reality, right? And then you put that aside. You're not, you're not thinking about that anymore. Now you're going to think about life, and you're going to think about how this you you think you are is going to make it in the world, how this you you think you are is going to pursue happiness how this you that you think you are is going to be successful because we all know that the you that we think we are, the only way it's going to get attention and love and acceptance is by performing well. Isn't that true? Yeah, you go to school, right? When you go to school, what happens in school? You discover that um, who you are in this social reality that you find yourself in is that the way you show up there is whether you're as good as the other kids. That's how you show up there. You know, whether you can spell as good as them, whether you follow the teacher's uh, instructions as good as them, whether you have as nice clothes as them. So you get thrown into competition, you know, as this character that you consider yourself to be. And then it goes on from there. It goes on from there. And for most people, there's no looking back. For most people, that's the beginning of a human life. They live a typical human life which means that they behave consistent with the idea that they are a physical body, consistent with the idea that you are this personality, right? You are the thinker of the thoughts that occur in your mind. You are the doer of the deeds. You are the doer of your actions in the world, right? So the game's on now, the game's on. You're a player, you have a piece on the board, you're a player, you have this body, it's unique. You have this voice in your head, right? That you can use this to think and you can think about life, and you can think about who you are, and you can think about what you want, and you can think about what you don't want, and you can think about how to make money, and you can think about how to not get caught lying, and you can think, of, you know, and so this becomes your life.
Your life becomes a thought process. You wake up in the morning and the first thing that happens is you think. You think about the day, you think about yesterday, you think about how you feel. You think of, when I say you think about how you feel, you think about how the body feels, but you consider yourself to be the body, so you think about how you feel. Right? And you go on, this is the life you're leading. The problem is that as you continue to live this life, it starts to become evident that something is missing. Something is not right here. Something, I, I don't feel complete. I don't feel, I don't feel that I'm really up to par, up to speed. I'm not sure why that's the case. And this is, the, this is going on with everybody who believes that they are a physical body and they are a personality. And the reason it's going on with everybody that believes that is because you've accepted a lie to be true and because you're trying to be something that doesn't exist, it's not working well. That's what's happening. You're trying to be something that doesn't exist and it doesn't work well. And you're among others who are trying to be something that doesn't exist either. So we're all gonna get together, we're all experiencing this trying to be something that doesn't exist, but we don't know we don't know that that's what's going on. We think we know who we are and we're a physical body and we're a personality and we're all trying to figure out how to win, how to get the game to win, how to be happy, how to be peaceful, how to be healthy, how to get what I want, how to not get what I don't want. And so we all conspire among ourselves to come up with how the game is gonna get played, right? And we all decide uh, what, the, what will bring happiness, because we're all interested in that, right? So we all decide what will bring happiness, and we agree that money will bring happiness. We all agree that success will bring happiness. We all agree that having the right car, having the right house, having the right body, having the right job will bring happiness. And then we're told we're, we're on this trajectory called life, and in this trajectory you want to satisfy your position in the game as you go through the time process and you want to meet certain standards through this process, and that's given by your society, your culture, and all the rest of it. So you do what you're supposed to do, don't you? Yeah, you go to school, you learn how to obey authority, uh, you, uh, you learn to, to start to pursue happiness by accumulating information, you know, and competing with other people to, to start to practice getting to the top of the herd. And while all this is going on, there is these, there is this, there are these symptoms that begin to appear, you know, like anxiety, right? Like, like uncertainty, like insecurity. And these things start to have, a, start to create problems with sleep, start to it cause problems in terms of uh, uh, inability to pay attention for any length of time, right? And then of course, we will we'll label that, we'll diagnose that and we'll give you some, some medication for that, right? Even though that's been around for as long as humanity has existed, it's only a certain recent period of time in the, in the past that we decided that we knew what that was. It's called ADHD, and we can treat that, okay? So again, we're turning it into something that we can control and, and treat rather than recognize, well, maybe the symptoms are here because there's something wrong, right? Maybe we're anxious because there's something that's not workable here. You know, maybe we're having difficulty sleeping. Maybe we're, we're feeling uncomfortable in our own skin because there's something that is not workable here. And for most human beings, they go through their entire life without recognizing what that is. And they, as, as life goes on and things get more desperate, you know, the silent desperation, quiet desperation, uh, that people start exchanging good ideas among themselves about how to deal with these symptoms, you know. And so we have alcohol, we have pot, we have football, we have television. Uh, we have all kinds of things that we could be occupied. We can occupy ourselves, right? We can occupy ourselves in our lives. Uh, find, that, find more and different activities to do, you know, to continue to, to try and discover or, or find this thing called happiness and peace of mind. And although it never works, right, people just don't give up. They don't really give up, they wear out. Right? People don't give up. When you get to 50, 60 years old, resignation begins to set in. You begin to, you begin to have this sense of futility, like this isn't going to end up well, right? <laughs> because who I think I am is going to die, and that's getting closer, and I haven't figured this shit out yet. So as time passes, it keeps getting worse and worse, right? So you can either just go into resignation and just uh, sit, uh, sit around the house, you know, just waiting for the inevitable, right? 
or you can start drinking more, or you can get on heavy duty psychiatric medication, you know, and eventually they'll put you in storage. <laughs> You know, they'll put you in a warehouse with other people your age, and you can all sit there and wait to die watching cartoons. <laughs> That's a human life, right? Or, or you can get involved in this interesting thing that is going around these days called mindfulness. You can get involved in this interesting thing that's going around these days called waking up, you know, called enlightenment. And you can begin to pursue that. And, uh, and then you can start to practice meditation. And if you start to practice meditation and you begin to learn about this possibility, it starts to, starts to become this new reality that you're interested in, that you're excited about, right? Uh, you want that. You, 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 this might be it, right? This might be it. I might be able to, if I practice meditation, I might be able to, to have happiness. I might be able to have peace of mind. I might be able to have satisfaction. I might be able to have clarity. My life might start to work. Okay, good, so I'm gonna practice meditation. But one of the first things I wanna know is how long is this gonna take, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, it's just like everything else in life. If it takes too long, you know, that's gonna eliminate this possibility because I don't have the patience to just keep meditating day after day, week after week, month after month, and believing that in time it's gonna work. So I might have to just go back to the pills or you know, just do whatever else there is available. So you have to understand, and this is why they're teachers, you have to understand that this has to involve a commitment. It didn't take one day for you to get the cra as crazy as you are. You were practicing craziness for year after year after year, becoming more and more neurotic, believing in your thoughts, believing that your thoughts were the truth, believing that you had a right to argue with people about what they thought because they were wrong, because your thoughts are always the truth. Your thoughts are always the right thoughts, right? This is just, these are examples of how sick and crazy everything is, right? But then here we are practicing meditation and the teacher's pointing out that there's a possibility here of discovering something. What is that possibility of discovering something? So I wanna share with you a statement that uh, one of my teachers made the other night in a meeting in which he was sharing and he's a meditation teacher from the Zen tradition. He said, for every breath you take, the breathing activity does not know that it's breathing. If, if, you, if you get what he says here, that can be enough to have you wake up, just by getting what he's pointing to here. For every breath you take, the breathing activity does not know that it is breathing. When you're sitting there and the body's breathing, the body does not know that it's breathing. In fact, you, in your ordinary way of understanding things, you would think that you, that you are breathing, right? You think you're breathing, right? Well, one of the things you discover in meditation is that if you're paying attention and if you become aware of the body breathing, just listen to what I said. If you become aware of the body breathing, then you're not breathing, you're watching the body breathing. That's what's actually happening. And, the, and you can discover that that's the truth because now you're not thinking about it, you're actually watching it, right? You're not thinking about it, you're not interpreting it, you're not saying, oh, that, oh that's me breathing, no. You're just being aware of the body breathing. So now something becomes possible, which is that you might discover the truth. You might discover <clears throat> that there is no you breathing you might discover that the body's breathing, and then as my teacher said, for every breath you take, the breathing activity does not know that it is breathing. There is a knower of the breathing activity. 